I spent the past seven days listening to Ariana Grande because honestly, some of y'all asked for it and I don't really know that much about Ariana Grande in the first place. Also, I felt like I wanted to test these comments for some reason, but my rule is that I have to listen to all of her studio albums at least once before listening to anything else. And throughout the video, I'll choose my top three songs of each album and then at the very end, I'll choose my top three songs overall and my top three albums overall. Here's what I personally know about Ariana Grande. She was on Nickelodeon, she dated Big Sean, something to do with her acting crazy in a donut shop, Pete Davidson, and I think she recently got married. Bruh. Now I personally don't have any negative thoughts or negative comments towards her, but after doing some like surface level digging, I realized that she's been through some unfortunate or controversial situations. Regardless, I'm gonna give you a quick summary of who she is. So Ariana Grande, wait, did you know that some people actually say Ariana instead of Ariana? What if it was like actually Ariana this whole time, but she just accepted like Ariana, just like Denzel Washington and Denzel Washington. She was born in Florida and officially began her career at age 15 by appearing in the Broadway musical 13. She later starred in Nickelodeon's Victorious and shortly after debuted her first album, Yours Truly. She is known for a lot of things, one being her four octave vocal range, which makes sense because she lists Mariah Carey and Whitney Houston as her main vocal influences. And one thing you may not know about her is that Mac Miller taught her how to sound engineer and produce her own vocals. One thing I personally think is funny is that her fan base is called the Arianators or Arianators, which she apparently hates according to this website. But either way, she has made her mark in the music industry and currently stands at number six in the world on Spotify which I'm not gonna lie, surprised me for some reason. What better way to start this one by getting my hair freshly done to have a fresh mind? That's that's all I got, I'm sorry. <laughs> but shout out to my girl Dee Dee, she's always making me look good. By the way, I made a playlist of all her albums and this is what that looks like. It's five hours and some change, but with all her songs, it'd be around six hours if you include her other singles and whatnot. I started with her first two albums, Yours Truly and My Everything. And let me just say, I didn't know a single song from the Yours Truly album, but it gave me like early 2000s pop vibes, like a JoJo or Chris Brown or even Destiny's Child. The song right there was the one that made me think of that era the most. And by the way, if you're thinking like, bro, you just got your hair done, what happened? Yeah, running and sweating and working out and all that stuff and other things like clothing rubbing against my hair. This is what causes this. So basically what I'm trying to say is I'm trying a new format. I wrote or typed out everything I thought as I was listening to the song and then later recorded it. Woo, your boy looking fresh. If you remember like two seconds ago what my hair looked like, this this is, for all people that don't know, this is what a retwist of dreads look like. I listened to most of the songs from her first album and made it to the last song, which was like, I can't remember the name of it. I literally just typed it in my phone. So that brings me to my top three from yours truly. And those were Almost Is Never Enough, the Way, Honeymoon Avenue, and the honorable mentions are right there in Better Left Unsaid. Better Left Unsaid to me was just different compared to the rest of the songs on the album. It had more of a EDM-ish vibe, which at the time I didn't realize was preparing me for the next album really. The main thing I'm realizing is like, I'm judging or expecting everything based off of her recent music within the past like three or four years. And so like to me, this first album of hers sounds it's just not what I was expecting. It's not bad, but it was just not what I was expecting. So as I was leaving, I started my everything and I'm gonna be real with you. I somehow made it this far in life and I didn't realize that in the song Break Free, I didn't know it was Ariana Grande. I don't know why, maybe it was because like at the time, Zed, Steve Aoki and you know, other EDM artists, they were bumping, they were super mainstream. And most of the songs had like a female vocalist. So I didn't really pay attention to the female vocalist. Primarily Ariana Grande, I didn't pay attention to her song. So I wasn't familiar with her voice yet. Woo, that was a lot for one big excuse. I do feel like she was transitioning to more like a trap and EDM kind of vibe with this album. And I actually knew songs on this album. I was reminded of songs like One Last Time and Love Me Harder and Problem. I honestly forgot about those songs. But just to get straight to it, my top three from this album were Love Me Harder, Break Free, and Just a Little Bit of Your Heart. Honorable mentions are big mistake, Be My Baby, and Bang Bang. I know that Bang Bang is technically Jesse J's song and you might think I'm crazy for some of the choices I made, but this is just after listening to the album one time through. And I try not to just like a song because it was a hit song or because the beat sound good or whatever. Two things I'll say about this album though, the song Hands On Me for some reason remind me of the song Give Me That by Chris Brown. I don't know why. And the second thing is going from My Everything to Bang Bang was crazy. I started Dangerous Woman on the second day and already I was like, ooh, this album has hit after hit. The song Dangerous Woman just finished and two things. I forgot about that song. Second thing, I forgot how like powerful feeling that song is, even though it's talking about a dangerous woman being a dangerous woman. But for me, I was just like, man, I can feel the emotion behind it. I guess what I'm trying to say, the song just has a nice little feel and swing to it. I think the biggest thing I'm realizing is that I didn't realize that A, she had so many songs, and B, 
she had so many songs that I already knew. Like the first four songs, well, not Moonlight, but the first four songs on Dangerous Woman. I knew all those songs, didn't even realize it. And while the day itself wasn't eventful because I was just working, I still made it through with these top songs. Dangerous Woman, Leave Me Lonely, Into You, My Honorable Mentions Are Side to Side, Sometimes Bad Decisions, and Jason's song. After listening to this album, I just realized that most of her songs are like certified club hits or they make me want to go work out or go for a run. I ain't gonna lie to you. I spent the day not listening to music really. I know it's kind of weird to say, but we spent most of the day getting the new whip. Uh, but seriously, I, I, I didn't intentionally listen to anything, I mean, other than songs from my kids' toys and everything. But right after I got home, I was working on the video that was uploaded right before this one. So you remember that time, like 30 seconds ago, when I said that her songs make me feel like I need to go work out or go for a run? You already know what it is. I feel like this wouldn't be a rally video if I didn't go for a run. On the way here, I actually finished the Sweetener album with the song Get Well Soon. And so the next album I'll be listening to while running 9.3 Glorious Miles is, what's what's her next album called? Thank You Next. I actually know that song, but I couldn't tell you a single song on the album other than that song. It says the album is only 41 minutes and this run should take me about an hour and 15-ish maybe. So I'll be listening to Thank You Next and Positions because remember I'm only listening to the studio albums. So I'm skipping over the K-Bye for now live. More, really more. Three, two, one. Woo! Two miles in. I don't know what song this is, but it says, the lyrics are, I think it says like, I'm hurt, I ain't gonna lie about it or something. I'll have to go back and check and see what song this is. But it's a good running song. Another wrong song required. Tripping, falling with no safety net. Those are the lyrics. No idea what song it is. But it's a good tempo. I'll try. I'll try. Thank you. You make your time. Man, there was one hill by the school. Oh. It's like the longest hill in the world. You did good. You did good. By the way, this is the shirt I got from the race. Ooh. Ooh. So with the race, I made it through Thank You Next and some of positions which while running a race is more difficult to focus on the songs when you have other people running with you and cheering on you. So my plan was to go back through those albums after listening to everything and see what I missed. But the songs that initially caught my attention for each album were God is a Woman, Sweetener, Breathing, which is perfect for running. My honorable mentions were No Tears Left to Cry, Successful, The Light is Coming, and R.E.M. Also for the song God is a Woman, my favorite part of that entire song, and this is just me being me, is when she hits you with the yeah, because for me, it turned into one of those moments where you're like, you know the song, but you don't really know the words to the song. So you kind of make up your own words until you get to the part that you know. So for me, it was like, a dip 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 a And then of course the chorus came in and all that. But for Thank You Next, I got Seven Rings, Imagine, and N-A-S-8. Honorable mentions gotta be Thank You Next and Break Up With Your Boyfriend. I don't know what it was about the song Imagine, but I was literally running and then when it got towards like the end of the song, I was like, ooh, this girl can sing. Like I already knew that, but that's how I felt. And I ain't gonna lie, when the album position started, I was like, this ain't really what I wanna be listening to while I'm running, but it is what it is. I do wonder though, if like someone knew of Ariana Grande, like her first album, and then they, for some reason, didn't listen to her for a while. And then positions was like their first comeback to Ariana Grande moment. I wonder if they were like, oh, is this, the, this ain't the same innocent Ariana Grande from Nickelodeon, ain't no way. But anyway, I finished positions on the way back from my race. My top three from that album were Positions, Off the Table, Just Like Magic, and my honorable mention, 34 plus 35, or 34 and 35, whatever you wanna call it. Yeah, I felt like I enjoyed that album the least, but I wanna do more of a deep dive into like the lyrics, just in case I missed something that she was explaining or something that would just help me understand where she's coming from. Today, I started and finished Eternal Sunshine, and I listened to it two times through because since it was the last album, I could start listening to whatever I wanted. I also wasn't a fan at first, because I even remember when Yes And first came out, I was like, I don't really like this song. But after my first listen, my top three were Bye, Eternal Sunshine, We Can't Be Friends, 
and my honorable mentions were Supernatural, and I still put Yes And just because it was, it started getting catchy. I did think it was cool that on the slightly deluxe version of the album, which is what I listened to, she did a remix to Yes And with Mariah Carey. And I just think it's cool when you look up to someone or something and you finally get that opportunity to work with that thing or with that person. I think that's a cool moment. Okay, the more and more I listen to Eternal Sunshine, the more I actually like the album. Like the song, We Can't Be Friends. I think that's a great song. It's a good bop. Something to jam to. So I did actually listen to the Eternal Sunshine while I was working and eventually got home and I checked out some of the lyrics to different songs since I was at the time when I could listen to anything. And let me tell you, I went straight to Dangerous Woman. I do think my favorite lyric of hers is probably from the song Sometimes, which says, cause we're collecting moments, tattoos on my mind. I think it's because even though this is from a relationship context, if you think beyond that, pictures or videos may not do a moment justice, but if that moment is that important to you, it'll never fade away in your mind, just like a tattoo, it doesn't fade away. So as I was doing this challenge, it actually inspired or reminded Abigail of Ariana Grande. She started listening to her more, mainly because she's got certified bops, let's be honest. Are you more of an Ariana fan than a Taylor Swift fan? Her songs are more like, her as an Ariana is like, more, uh, huh? More good. <laughs> no, they're, they're, they're like more, hit songs, if that makes sense. As in, more of them would be played in like a club or a upbeat setting, if that makes sense. If I had one thing to generalize, I would say that like most of her songs are about all levels of a relationship. However, I know that most artists, at least I hope most artists, create these songs and these lyrics, whether it's them individually or with a team, based off of their personal experiences. I know I mentioned I was only gonna listen to the studio albums, but I did listen to some singles that she was in, like songs with The Weeknd or the song with Justin Bieber. She also has her Christmas song, but I can honestly say I'm enjoying her music. It's not torturous. I didn't think it was gonna be torturous or anything like that, but I may not enjoy it to the full extent like you would, because I don't relate to it as you would. I, of course, have to do one final thing to enhance my Ariana Grande listening experience. So recently Taco Bell basically did a collab with uh, Cheez-Its and this is the Crunchwrap Cheez-It. This was, oh, you can see it right there. There's a Cheez-It right there. So I'm gonna eat this thing right now. And as I was doing this, I was finalizing my top three songs and top three albums, which if you were paying attention, you could probably guess them by now, at, at least my top song. I don't know what it was, but listening to the song Break Free While Eating, it like gave me a vibe. That's the best way to describe it. My top three albums are Dangerous Woman, Eternal Sunshine, and then honestly, third place is constantly between Thank You Next and Sweetener. My top songs are Dangerous Woman, Shocker, God Is A Woman, and We Can't Be Friends. See, the issue is I also would wanna add songs like Break Free or no, no Tears Left To Cry up there too, and many of her other songs. So like, this could all change. Dangerous Woman probably won't change because to me, that's one of those songs where you sing while you're home alone cleaning up. And feel free to let me know what songs I left out that you're like, oh, how in the world can you leave out this song or this album? This album's the best album. I think overall, if somebody were to ask me if I wanted to go see her live, I'd probably say no, but I would also pay attention to like when her next song or next album is coming out. But I wouldn't be like waiting at midnight for it to drop or anything like that. I just kind of acknowledge it, listen to it, and then go about my business. If anything, this has made me want to check in on other artists that I initially listened to and then kind of stopped paying attention to them after a year or two. It makes me want to see if A, they're still making music, and if they are, is their music good? Has it improved? Has it gotten worse? Because honestly, for Ariana Grande, even with all the stuff that she's been through, controversial or positive, negative, whatever, she's pushed through all that and still continue to make music. And I guess that's something good to remember. Like I tell myself this all the time. Not everybody's gonna like my stuff, not everybody's gonna like my videos, not everybody's gonna like me, but when you're going through the valleys, you gotta continue pushing through because eventually you're gonna get to that mountaintop you're searching for. Yeah. Sunday morning fuels quickly turns to afternoons. It's like that I can barely go and catch it, kinda how I feel with you.